Have you ever wondered what the different cat ratings are on multimeters? Let's break into it. So the cat ratings are category ratings and they're more specifically over voltage installation category numbers. So each multimeter is going to be rated for a certain amount of uh, voltage, a certain amount of current running through it in a certain environment. But the best way to think about it is that each one's going to have a little bit different level of impedance which means that the meter is going to allow a certain amount of current to go through it. So when we talk about like an electrical service, we have this thing called an available fault current. And available fault current just means based off of the proximity to the source of power, the transformer, the size of conductors and the length that those conductors are away from the service, if those wires were to short at any certain point, how much current can actually flow? Because there's no more impedance, right? Except for just the conductor. There's no motors, there's no other receptacles, or lights in the way to add more impedance to slow current down or have a lower amount of current. Well, multimeters are very similar. So uh, things like a category four, category three, category two, and category one, they're all meant to be used in certain places in circuits because at certain places in circuits, you're gonna be further or you might have more impedance away from the source. So it can handle a certain amount of fault current going through that device without having like an arc flash or anything within the device. Um, a lot of multimeters actually have fuses just in case there is some kind of crazy thing like that that happens um, so that the, the meter doesn't just blow up in your hand if you get in an over voltage situation or if you have too much current flowing through that situation because of where you're using it. And a lot of people don't know this. They're just like, oh, I'm just gonna grab a multimeter, go out and start testing stuff. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Think about where you're at in the circuit when you're testing it. And as an electrician, most of what we should be using for testers or multimeters when we're actually pulling out leads on a device should be 600 volt to 1000 volt rated. You don't wanna pull a category two device out and start going out to your service where there's service entrance conductors coming right off of a pole because it's not designed for that kind of environment. And if that's too much current flowing through to actually give you a reading, you could actually damage that thing and potentially hurt yourself. Now, before we get into all of this uh, cat business, one thing that we need to understand is that we're talking about specific environments, right? Like cat ratings are not talking about like, this is a cat three meter. When something's rated category three, that means that it's rated for an environment, which is a category three environment. So uh, just keep in mind when I say that it's a cat two meter, cat four meter, something like that, it's just the rating of the device to be used in a specific setting. Let's start out with category one. Now, if you go around and start looking for cat one testers or category one testers, you're not gonna find anything. Again, this is saying that the category one is the environment. It's, it's inside of a piece of equipment that you're gonna be working on stuff. You can use a category three or category four meter inside of a category one environment. Um, so you're just specifically talking about that. But as I, as far as I know, I haven't ever seen a multimeter that's like rated category one, unless it's you know some old multimeter that I'm just not aware of. What you really do start seeing is the category two and up. So with the category one tester, you're looking at around 30 ohms of impedance at the test source. Um, and that's what that specific tester is designed for. Category two are gonna have a little bit higher impedance in them, so we're talking about 12 ohms of impedance at that test source. It can handle a little bit more voltage, that's why it has a little bit less impedance on it because they're going to be allowing more current to flow through this thing. So an example of a category two rating on a piece of equipment is I've got this plug tester. So this is going to be up to 300 volts. So within category two, we've got 300 volt working voltages that can handle up to 2,500 volts of transient over voltage. Um, if this were a 600 volt rated tester, you would be able to get up to 4,000 transient volts, or if it was a 1,000 volt rated CAT2, like some of these leads are that we'll talk in a minute, uh, then that's capable of withstanding 6,000 volts of, of, of a transient surge through the actual piece of equipment. And really quick, just if any of you are kind of at that apprentice level where you don't really understand what's happening inside of a multimeter, we're basically short circuiting a circuit. So you got two hot conductors that come in, you hook a meter up, current goes through that thing and there's a certain amount of resistance built up or a certain amount of impedance rather um, inside of that 
because of the circuitry inside of the device. It would be the same thing as you taking a light bulb and connecting one of those hots to one side and one of those hots to another side, and then the light bulb comes on. You're running it through a load, essentially, or you're, you're like, running it through uh, a whole bunch of traffic all of a sudden. So it allows you to do some kind of work because there is a certain amount of impedance inside of the device. So category two is more just meant for 120 volt loads, you know, at specific pieces of equipment, things like that. Next is category three testers. Now category three testers are probably what most electricians are gonna have out in the field. Um, whether it's a tester or an actual multimeter, whether it's a clamp on amp probe, things like that, most of them are gonna be rated about 600 volts, which they can handle any voltage from 600 down, but their impedance level is gonna be around two ohms, which means, again, we're, we're going down, there's less impedance, less impedance, less impedance, so the, the multimeter is designed to handle more current going through it because you're handling a higher voltage so it needs to be able to so category three testers are more for you know working in three phase dis distribution working in single phase lighting things like that but it's it's usually a little bit higher voltages a lot of times we come across 240 volts or 277 or 480 volts in three phase systems you can still use them in single phase systems you're just gonna have lower voltages but they're designed a little bit heavier duty to be used you know kind of all over a facility um, on anything up to 600 volts. We've got the uh, MM325 and the MM420. A big difference between the two multimeters is that the MM420 is auto ranging and the MM325 is manual ranging. So there, you can tell there's a big difference between the look of them. The 325 has a lot more settings on it because you actually have to manually set what range you're trying to test, whereas the 420 has fewer settings, but it has a, a, the great function of it being auto ranging. Whereas on the MM420 is a little bit different. Your, your knob, you just have one setting for voltage. So essentially you go to voltage, it's auto ranging, but you do have this button at the top where you can select to actually change whatever range you're observing. Uh, same thing with resistance, you know, rather than having five different resistance settings and a continuity setting that is different, um, you know, less buttons, but more things on the dial. The MM420, uh, less things on the dial, but you do have some more buttons where you can uh, hold functions. You can, you know, uh, select which range that you want. You've got a minimum and maximum, but essentially same thing. They're both category three rated. So they are meant to be used in category three environments. Uh, leads are essentially the same. So the leads on these will be category three rated as well. Now you are gonna come across some leads sometimes uh, that have multiple ratings on them. Uh, it'll say like category three, 1000 volts or category four, uh, 600 volts. It just means that if you are in a category three environment that you can, uh, you can use these on a 1000 volt system, but if you are in a category four environment, you can only use them up to 600 volts. So, um, and take care of your leads, honestly. Don't just let these things like roll around in your truck, get bent up, get messed up, short them out. Um, take care of uh, the test equipment that you've got because this is what we use. This is what we rely on out in the field is like our most important tool. So just take care of this stuff. All right, so last but not least, we're talking category four. So category four usually comes with a 1000 volt rating, a little bit higher over voltage situations. Um, the impedance is pretty much the same as a category three. They're quoted at, at two ohms again. Um, so it still allows a lot more current to flow through, but it also allows you to test higher voltages than just 600. So again, most electricians probably not gonna need a, a thousand volt rated meter because a 600 volt rated uh, meter is, is more than enough for what you're doing. If you start working on medium voltage circuits and you start getting into the multiple thousands, then that's a completely different kind of environment that's gonna need completely different kinds of equipment. Because even a category four up to a thousand volt rated, you can't stick on a 15,000 volt piece of equipment or a you know, 3,000 volt piece of equipment or you're gonna damage that thing. So some examples of category four, the MM720 is a dual rating. Uh, for this multimeter. So uh, this is a really cool multimeter actually. Like what's dope about it is look at the screen. These are actually called reverse contrast displays because typical screens are gonna be light with some dark numbers. These are dark with some light numbers. And the other cool thing about these displays is it's auto adjusting. So it can tell what kind of light, what kind of environment you are. However, the MM420 and MM325 have backlit displays that do not auto adjust. All you have to do though is press the buttons to manually turn the backlight on or off. But anyways, the, the reason that I love this meter is 
Um, because of that, because of all the options, because of the fusing that they do, they allow you up to uh, two different fusing options, but it's both category four and category three rated. Do I think every electrician out there needs to have a category four multimeter? Absolutely not. Uh, just understand that what you're doing, it's really dependent on how much fault current is possible to flow. And if it's hard for you to understand that or remember that, from the source, from a transformer, the closer you are to that transformer, the more fault current can flow because there's less impedance. Wire has a certain amount of impedance. The longer the wire is, the more that there is, the more like particles and matter that there is to resist all of those electrons trying to go through that. So if there's barely any wire, there's gonna be a high amount of current that can flow much higher than if you had three miles of wire out there and you're trying to test at the end of that three miles. So higher category, closer to the source, lower category, further away from the source. Also, the higher category, the more it's allowed to have more current flowing through it at, uh, and the, the meter is gonna have less impedance in it to allow more current to flow and it's actually designed for that. The lower, obviously, there's gonna be more impedance to kind of limit the amount of current that can flow. And then most importantly, these are all voltage ratings. So the category ratings are specifically for voltage. So always make sure that you're using a multimeter that uh, fits the category, but then immediately that it fits the voltage rating of whatever equipment or environment that you're in. Big shout out, by the way, to Klein. Thank you so much for constantly keeping me stocked with brand new multimeters, especially the brand new MM450. This thing's dope. Look how slimline this thing is. This is the skinniest, like smallest multimeter I think I've ever held. The leads actually attach on the side, which is really cool. But instead of having like a bulky thing like this, you can see how much skinnier it is. It's got pretty much the same profile, um, but but, you know, like there's there's just less going on. Now this one doesn't have as much bulk on it. It doesn't have a kickstand like the actual 720 does. The 720s another really big favorite of mine, but I love being able to just set that thing up on a kickstand. So uh, it is a little bit bulkier, just kind of like a bigger unit all in all, but I do love how slim line and small this thing is. Now the lead alert protection that they have on these things, this is really cool. Sometimes people don't know which one of these you're supposed to plug things in based off of which functions and you can actually fry meters that way, which is another reason they have fuses in the back of them because in proper usage, um, I've actually done it myself <laughs> in the past. Uh, so they have this little lead alerts uh, on them. So there's little LEDs down here that light up and it says, hey dummy, these are the ones that you're supposed to plug into. Notice that one's not lit. So if I'm testing for continuity or resistance, I'm going to put my leads in these spots. Then if I'm gonna twist and do something else over here, if I go to uh, the 10 amp setting, then it says, hey, dummy, you gotta move over to the other side. So I think that's pretty cool. That's a function on the MM420, the MM325, and the MM450. It's just that the 450 is on the sides. 720 still has an option. It doesn't have the same LED function, but there is something on screen that pops up if you have the leads put into the wrong thing, which is a big improvement from the past. These things also have increased temperature accuracy. So if you ever use the temperature probe and plug these things in and you're actually trying to get Fahrenheit or Celsius readings, they've improved the accuracy of those temperature readouts. And for you to change the fuses out, like I mentioned before, you want to have fuses in your multimeter. Every single one of these, you've got one screw to take off in the back. Literally just pop one screw out, you open it up. There's two different fuses most of the time. Uh, some, some multimeters might only have like a single fuse, um, but most of these have two different fuses based off of which side you're actually using, which things are plugged into, and the fuses are rated for different situations. So let me know if you got any questions. Leave comments below. Love you crazy people. We'll see you in the next one.